Okie dokie, it has been a minute since I have filmed a tank build for you guys and today is one of those days I got something special for you, but we got to go down here for a little bit Hello, you guys are supposed to be coming down here with me There you are. Okay, you see the tanks behind us here home to the world's dumbest turtles respectfully known as the crackheads, commonly known as the Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtles. Well, their time for coming out of brumation is rapidly approaching. As a side note though, if you guys are looking for a video on their brumating and breeding, I have been filming something like that, but you know, let me know by leaving a like on the video, comment what you'd like to see from that video, as well as don't forget to subscribe because then you'll be notified when the video ends up coming out. And we don't want you to miss that video, especially if you're watching the remodel of their tanks. I think it's time to give them a little bit of a spruce up, bring some life to these barren tanks. Excuse the sounds in the background, Bree's working on a redesign for the Diplodactylus galeatus. These cute little guys, unfortunately no video for that, but I'll show you the tank in a reptile room tour coming up. Enough of my blabbering, let's get this guy out to the workbench and get moving. And now that we have the tank outside the room, the first thing we have to do is empty it. The only reason I'm actually emptying the entire tank is because there are definitely some unwanted pests on the plants, and that means their larvae is probably in the substrate, so it's all gotta go. I removed the pieces of cork, set them aside for a little while, and then ended up soaking them for about an hour in hot, soapy water. After using the dustpan to remove most of the substrate, I ended up finishing it off with a quick shop vac. That's just to get everything, you know, crispy and clean. And some of you at this point might think, oh, sweet, we're done. Oh, no, we are not. Look at that. Look how disgusting that glass is. We need to fix that. And you might be thinking to yourself that, oh, well, that has to be it. You just gotta clean the glass, it makes sense. No, no, let me let you in on another little secret. Behold, the front vent actually unclips and is completely removable. This is something that I know that most people don't clean and I know from experience that gets absolutely disgusting, especially with those of you with New Caledonian geckos that like to poop on the front glass. I'm not gonna go really much more into it in this video. I'll probably end up making a YouTube short or something, so. Keep your eye out for that. But you can see, it's been a little while since I've removed this. We actually had hog noses in here. That's why there's Aspen. Anywho, now that we've identified two other areas that need to be cleaned besides the tank itself, let's get to it. I used a strong mixture of vinegar and water. I used the cleaning vinegar because it is twice as concentrated as like cooking vinegar. Of course, I completely failed scraping the glass here. I meant to have like a 50-50, but you guys saw, and this is the after very clear difference between where I cleaned and completely covered in water spots. I just hose down the front vent, wipe it out with my finger and call it good. Following that, in order to finish the setup of the tank, you need to put the vent back on. And now that we've got everything all cleaned up, it's time to bust out the substrate. Now, when you're setting up a tank, you can always use your own substrate, or if you elect to go buy some from Josh's Frogs, that is definitely an option. However, here, I always make our own. It just makes more sense to me, and it's also much more cost effective. The mixture that I'm going to experiment with the turtles today is some topsoil, or in this case, it's like compost and peat moss and whatnot, and then a bunch of coconut core and a bunch of coconut chip. The coconut core basically is a cheap material that holds a lot of water. The compost is going to provide a whole bunch of nutrients and the cocoa chip is gonna prevent it from being super compactable. So it'll still maintain some airiness to the roots of the plants. This mixture I made here was roughly two parts coconut core, one part topsoil and about one and a half parts cocoa chip. Now after mixing it all together, we're left with a nice earthy smelling substrate mix that should hold a good amount of moisture for the turtles. Now let's get out of this basement and into one of my favorite places, a garden center. Because we have to do some plant shopping, let's head over to the local greenhouse. Am I the only one that just finds happiness at garden centers? Like, no matter how stressed I am, how many things I'm thinking about, you walk into a greenhouse and it's just this primal sense of like, ah, nature. 
calm. Certainly ain't no chill about the size of this damn lemon though. And look at that coffee plant. Those coffee cherries looked incredible. And I really hope they kind of made some in-house brew or something with their own coffee beans. Something that I aspire to do one day when I have a greenhouse of my own. This was our cart before we ended up leaving, and there's a lot more plants in here than just what we're going to use for the turtles, but here are the plants that we are using for the turtles. We have some Pilea depressa, or baby tears. There's a couple begonia, as well as several different ferns. Something that I don't show in this video is some cuttings of pothos. I know, I know. I'm just well aware that these guys are going to destroy these tanks, and any plants that I put in here, they're going to trample, so why not put in some more bulletproof versions? Versions, like the pothos. Now that we've gone through the plants that we're going to be using, we can move on to visualizing how we want the tank to look. When visualizing your hardscape, sometimes it can take minutes, sometimes even hours or even days. I really didn't spend too long visualizing the setup that I wanted. I did have a pretty good idea of what I wanted done before making these tanks, and I really didn't want to use any extra cork bark or anything like that. Now that I have a good idea of what I want and where it's all coming together, it's time to dump in the substrate. Once the substrate's in, I'm gonna add the hardscape, as well as the plants and the water bowl. And the final touch is some leaf litter, just to bring everything together, make them feel more at home, you know, black-breasted leaf turtles. You gotta be cliche and throw in some leaf litter too. Now that the tank is pretty much finished, all we gotta do is move it back into the room and give it one big hose down with the spray bottle. And now that we have this very yin and yang type scenario of the brand new tank, let's get over to this desolate wasteland and spruce it up a little bit. Once again, starting it off the same way, we have to empty the enclosure. Everything is going in the garbage, except for the hardscape. That is going to be soaked in soapy water. But here I actually filmed the process of me using the razor blade and vinegar to clean the enclosure. And I really never realized that this was kind of a skill, but I've been doing it basically my whole working life. I actually do realize I've developed a bit of a skill for cleaning the glass with a razor blade. If you aren't comfortable with the razor blade and vinegar method, never fear, Exoterra is here. They make a fantastic glass cleaning product that is designed to remove the hard water spots on your glass. I did end up making a video about it, so I'll leave it in the cards as well as in the description down below for you guys to go check out. Now after the tank is all spick and span, we've removed the front grate and cleaned that out as well. Now that we've dumped in the substrate, it's time to put in the hardscape. And before I do the planting stage, I did stage the plants just to verify that where they are is where I actually want them. And whenever I was happy with that, I ended up unpotting them, removing most of the soil and planting them into the tank. As I was planting the tank, I also placed in the water dish. Then it was time to sit back and enjoy a nice coffee after finishing the tank. And that's just when I remembered that I totally forgot the leaf litter, as well as the bioactivity part of this, the springtails and the isopods. So let's get to fixing that, starting with the springtails. Oh, look at them being all hydrophobic and floating on the water and stuff. These guys are great for your enclosures. They mostly tackle fungi and whatnot that might appear in the leaf litter or in hides, on feces, that kind of deal. And once their population exceeds a certain number, they actually do do a lot for breaking down the feces and fecal material in the tank. And now we're just gonna lift this little leaf up here to reveal some of the isopods that are residing in these tanks. Their main purpose is to break down the fecal material and they'll help break down the leaf litter as well, basically creating kind of a fertilizer for the plants that are in this tank. And there we have it. We have two completely finished, beautiful enclosures for the Geomida Spangleri, and I know for a fact that you guys gotta take in these beautiful views now because the turtles are gonna totally trash them over the next year, year and a half. And speaking of the turtles, you guys might be wondering where the heck are we keeping them? Well, they're being kept in our basement 
under a windowsill where it stays a consistent 50 to 53 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 degrees Celsius. They will be making their way into the room over the next couple of weeks, so... That is actually where we are keeping the turtles right now. I did end up filming an entire video about the brumation process and hopefully I will incorporate the breeding as well. If all works out as planned, they will be breeding this year, so I will document that as well. If you guys are curious about that, let me know in the comments down below. Also, click the like button. That shows me that you want to see this new turtle video. I really want to show you guys the entire process, and I think you guys could benefit from it too, because it seems kind of weird keeping turtles in a bin under a cold window. I have a couple big announcements coming about the reptile room and streaming on Twitch, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that for any of you gamers out there. That will be coming April 1st, along with the reptile room tour, so be prepared for that. I hope you guys have a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, so you don't miss the reptile room tour. That's gonna do it for me. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.